I want to just say a couple of words about a couple of words that really jump out at me in the scripture today. Um, this is some of the most intimate language I think you can possibly say. And I want to, for a moment, imagine two lovers. And these lovers come together and they, they love to embrace and to kiss and to say uh, affectionate, loving words. And one might say this to the other one, I want to live in you and want you to live in me. I want us to be one forever. Well, that's what Jesus says to us today. Uh, he says, I and the Father are one. I living in him, him living in me. And I want to live in you and you live in me. There couldn't be more affectionate or intimate or loving language. I, I think it's impossible. Uh, the desire for oneness, the desire for oneness with God the Father, with the Son living in me and he living in me, living in him, we living in him, he living in us, and all of this blessed through the power of the Spirit of God. It's incredible. So today, um, I think the first two readings, which I read in English, are the two that I want to particularly pick on for the English speaking. Uh, Philip goes to Samaria, and he preaches the word, and he does all kinds of miraculous events in the name of Jesus Christ and through the gift of the Spirit. And people are coming to God. People are coming to Jesus, and they're being baptized. But this is a, an interesting thing, and I, I imagine that this is the, uh, the place where we get in Scripture uh, that, that look at the separation between what we call baptism and confirmation. Because here in Acts uh, 8, it says that when the apostles in Jerusalem had heard uh, that Jesus Christ had been preached in Samaria and all these people had come to God through Christ, uh, they realized that the Spirit had not yet been poured out over them. Of course, they received the Spirit of God in baptism, but I think the early church saw there was something uh, like the Pentecost experience for people who received the fullness of the Spirit. And so these two uh, apostles, Peter and John, go there to Samaria, and they laid hands on them, and they were just covered with the Spirit of God. And maybe more importantly, or just as importantly, they received the Spirit. That means that they took the Spirit in, and they believed and trusted that the Spirit of God now was now living in them. As I say in my pastor notes, I think, uh, today, um, this brings to life... Um, the first, the first line from First Peter today. And this is what it says, Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. You bless your hearts with the awareness that Christ dwells there. You living in him and he living in you. When we do that, this is when grace and spirit and life and faith come alive. You know that prayer that I gave out a couple of years ago, uh, or the uh, examination of conscience, morning prayer, evening prayer, whenever you do it. I do it every morning, uh, about six in the morning with my coffee. And in it, um, after giving gratitude to God for whatever I'm most grateful for in the last 24 hours, it's the second step that for me means the most. When was I my best version of myself, and when was I not my best version? Not my worst version, just not my best version. Another way of saying that is, when was I aware that Christ was dwelling in me and that everything I was doing was in the name of Christ? And when was I not as aware of that? In the seminary, uh, I remember when somebody would say something mean, uh, somebody would say this, is that what Jesus would say? Or is that what Jesus would do? And although it, it may seem a little trite, uh, but it, practically speaking and, and literally speaking, that's what is supposed to happen in us when we sanctify Christ as Lord in our hearts, when he becomes Lord of our hearts and life. Then Christ dwells in us, and he dwells in our words and our thoughts and our actions. It becomes real as he becomes real in us. That's the invitation, I think, in the scriptures today.